Hi, Keller Williams. I am Christy Bryant in Market Center One with Best of Austin Living Team at Keller Williams. I teach agents how to use DocuSign. It used to be DotLoop, now it's DocuSign. My intention is to share with you best practices for agents to fully utilize DocuSign. There are some great videos available for DocuSign in command. However, I found that not all of them are uh, the full scope and um, there are some hacks, best practices that I'm using. If you have some best practices you would like to share, feel free to upload a video or send me what it is and I will share it with folks. And uh, make sure that you go into KW Connect because there is some great information in there. One side note, if you use zip forms, feel free to keep using zip forms. It is a high level way of using uh, command DocuSign. However, I do not use zip forms. Uh, feel free to reach out to Crispin Martinez in Market Center One. He is a high level user of zip forms. I am committed to using DocuSign as it is, um, since not all states, not all market centers have access to zip forms. So we're going to get started. First of all, when we are uh, going into command, make sure that you open a new incognito window. And when you go in, you will put in agent.kw.com. Best practice. Well, actually, it's not even the best practice. What you have to do is you have to first have a contact and then the opportunity. You cannot create an opportunity without a contact. So you want to go ahead and go into contacts, click add contact, and create that contact. I'm going to be using Sally Smith today. She is already one of my contacts, so I'm not going to create her again. Once you have your contact, so if you're following along, you can pause this video, create your contact, and then uh, start again once you've created your contact. There are several ways of creating the opportunity. I could go into my contact, Sally Smith, click on Opportunities over here on the right side of the screen, and click on Create Opportunity. The second way is I can come over to Opportunities here on the left side of the screen, and then I could click on create opportunity once that comes up. I want to fill out this information. Today, Sally Smith is going to be a buyer, so please choose buyer. Here's where you need to put in the contact. So if, again, if you don't have the contact already created, you cannot move forward with this opportunity. So make sure you have your contact created. For the purpose of this training, we're going to be using one buyer. You can have multiple buyers. You can have two, three buyers, probably have more than that. Um, however, for this training, we're going to use one buyer. So I have Sally Smith in here. I could change the opportunity name if I wanted to. Fill out any of this information that you have. For the purpose of this, I do need a commission rate. You can see the little red asterisk here in order for us to move forward. We're going to go ahead and click on Create. And we're going to get started. We want to create some documents so we can move forward with this transaction. You'll notice when the opportunity comes up, it immediately takes us into details. It is important to note that you will see details on this screen here in Command, and you will see details within DocuSign. Yes, there are two different places for details. They do not autofill between the two, so you need to fill them both out. However, for what we're doing right now, I'm not going to spend time in Command filling out details. I'm going to click on Documents. I know that I'm in Documents because now there is a blue line hyperlink under Documents. When I was under Details, it had the blue line under Details. So I click on Documents, and I will see the first time that I come in here, start a transaction over here on the right side of the screen. For the purpose of this training, we're going to be using DocuSign. Please note that if you have set up DotLoop as an application within Command, the same way that you've set up DocuSign, you're going to see both options. Once you commit to DocuSign or DotLoop on this screen, then that is the option that you're going to be given moving forward for this particular opportunity. And most market centers will no longer have access to DotLoop, so I encourage you to start using DocuSign. And for the purpose of this training, we are going to use DocuSign. I'm going to click on it. Once I've clicked on DocuSign, it will take me into DocuSign. If you look at the top left of the screen, I am in command. I have the one uh, URL tab for command, and then it opened DocuSign, realestate.docusign.com. If you are in the habit of closing out the tabs, uh, you want to get out of that habit and keep them open. And to, in order to most effectively use DocuSign and command, you need to have both of the tabs open. I need to have both command open 
and DocuSign. So here I'm within DocuSign. It immediately takes me into a DocuSign room. It brings me into Sally Smith Buyer, which is the opportunity name, and it gives the same name as that opportunity to the room. This ID is important. I'll share more about that in another video, and it shows the date that we created it. It automatically takes us into documents. It has documents in its underline. I want to go into details. For those who are familiar with dot loop, the view details section in dot loop enabled dot loop to really work for you. It's the same within DocuSign. You need to spend time in the details page in order for DocuSign to fully work for you. On the left side of the screen, it's going to have information about the property, about the address. Since I'm working with a buyer right now, I do not have that information. If it was a listing, I would go ahead and put that information in. Right now, it's a buyer. I'm going to put the buyer under buyer rep agreement, so I do not have the information on the left side of the screen. I'm going to click on edit here at the top right, and I'm going to fill out the people information on the right side of the screen. I do not have a seller one. I do not have a seller two. I'm going to keep on scrolling. I do not have a listing agent one or a listing agent two. Then I have buyer one. So it shows Sally Smith to pull that information in. Thank you, command, for pulling that information in. That's actually new. I'm going to put in any additional information that I have. If I have an address for Sally, by all means, I'm going to put it in. I do need an email address for her in order for her to electronically sign within DocuSign. So I have to have an email address. Surely I have a phone number because I'm going to be setting up an appointment with her. So surely I have a phone number. Any other information I have, I'm going to go ahead and put it in. I don't have her physical mailing address, but I do know she lives in Texas. Buyer 2, I do not have one for this transaction. Buyer Agent 1, this is me. I will share more information about using this little icon, people icon, in another video. For the purpose of this training, I want to put in a different email address. I do not want to put in the email address that Command pulled in. I want to use my Best of Austin Living email address. So change anything in here that you need. This needs to be Keller Williams Realty. And it has the correct address. I need to put in Austin. My country. And Texas. And the postal code. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click Save. So now I have enabled... DocuSign to use uh, like pre tagged roles. This is a very important page. Now I'm going to click on documents. There are several ways to add documents in DocuSign. If I click here, add documents to your room, this is going to take me to my desktop. If I come over here to plus add and I go to computer, same function, it'll take me to the desktop. I can click on DocuSign forms, zip form, box, Dropbox, Google Drive. For the purpose of this training, I'm going to click on DocuSign Forms. This is going to show me the options I have available for Market Center number one. Your screen may look a little different here. I want to change from library to group, library to group, and then I'm going to, once I click on DocuSign Forms group, I get the drop down that shows me all the forms that my Market Center thinks that I will need. This is a buyer, so I'm going to click on Buyer Residential. For anybody who knows me, I like to work as efficiently and effectively as possible. So I am not going to go in and choose the forms that I need. For the Texas Real Estate Commission, there are three forms that I need. General information, buyer rep agreement, information about brokerage services, and most people add on the wire fraud warning. I certainly could choose those documents here, or I can click Select All. I'm going to click Select All and click Add. On this particular screen, once the documents are pulled in, you have an option of how you want to see the documents. This is on the list view. For my brain, I like to look at the list. Some people want to see the grid view. You choose for yourself. I can change that here in the top right. Here, this is how the documents are sorted on the page. I have the newest showing at the top. I could change it to alphabetical. I could do the inverse, alphabetical Z to A. You can choose. So I'm going to go back to Added Newest. These are all active documents. It's the same as in dot loop. You cannot delete a document. However, you can archive a document. So if you ever think that a document has gone away, it hasn't. 
it most likely somehow just got archived, and so you could find it by going to all or archive documents here. So for the purpose of this training, we're going to go into the three documents that the Texas Real Estate Commission requires us to have. So general information. It says general information and notice to sellers. It is the exact same document, so I'm fine choosing that. There will be another video that shows you templates. All of the documents we're using today, I actually use out of templates, but for this particular purpose, I'm going to show you how to use it without having set up templates. So any information in here that I need to add, I would add in. So I will say that for our market center, we have to have our, a surveillance um, information that goes in this last box. However, the information uh, requires more text than what's there. So I had this just set up on my desktop. This is the surveillance information. If you use dot loop, then you can just pull that in from dot loop. Um, so if I right click and put it in here, it actually does not put in the whole clause because there's not enough space. So I'm gonna show you how to put this information in when we go into the envelope. Not to confuse things, stick with me. So I couldn't put that particular information in because the box, the DocuSign box is not big enough here, but I have a second opportunity to put it in. I am gonna go ahead and put it in Keller Williams Realty here. And for the purpose of this document, um, I am done. I'm gonna click save and close. The next document I'm gonna go into is information about brokerage services. Again, I will show you in a different video how to use templates, but for the purpose of this training, you would need to go ahead and fill this information in. I'm going to do this as quickly as possible. So go ahead and put your information in. Don't put the phone number. And again, if you're following along and doing the work with me, you could pause this video and do it right now. Gene Grubb, 032 1636. Jacob Grubb at gw.com. Phone number. Linda Ramsey. License number zero six four one seven four Linda Ramsey at kw.com phone number and then there's me. Funny that I'm misspelling my own name. Oops. So I don't know about you, but I don't want to be typing this in every single time. So that's why in a separate video, I will show you how to use templates. Okay, so that's all that I need in here. I'm going to click Save and Close. And then our last document, the buyer rep agreement. I'm going to type in representation. Here's the buyer tenant representation. I will completely fill this out. I will not do it for the purpose of this training because it'll take too long, but everything that I know in here, I will go ahead and fill out. Um, so you would go ahead and you would do the same thing. I, again, I will be showing you in uh, the envelope section that if you miss something that you didn't put in, you do have a second opportunity in DocuSign to put that information in. I'm gonna go ahead and click Save and Close. You would wanna go through the entire document to make sure that you get everything in there. Okay, so we're gonna choose these three documents. So I'm gonna remove that. So I need uh, the information about brokerage services. I'm gonna click on that. I've already prepped that document. General information, I'm gonna click on that. And our representation agreement. Okay, so I have those three documents clicked. It remembers it's a smart system. I don't need to go back and look. I could just uh, remove this and I'll see that those three documents are clicked. Um, 
if, if you feel like you need to see that. Once you clicked on documents, you get this toolbar that shows up here. Copy, move, email, combine, DocuSign, archive, and unarchive. We're going to click on DocuSign, and that's going to take us into an envelope. So ideally, I've already prepped these documents. They are ready to go. Please DocuSign. I'm going to put buyer representation agreement. This is the name of the envelope. I have the three documents here. I prefer to have the information about broker services first. When I have this double arrow, when I'm hovering over the document, I can move the document. So I usually put information about broker services first, general information, and then the representation agreement last. If I had the wire fraud warning, I could also add that in here. So I can move the documents, I can change those around. If I forgot to add a document, I can click on room docs and I can add that document here. In the other video that I'm going to share with you, I'll show you how to add a template at this section. You can add templates from the envelope. So add recipients to the envelope. Since we put, let me move my little face here. Since we put information into the details page, we have activated the pre-tagged roles. I'm going to click on buyer one. Buyer one is going to be Sally Smith. I click on Sally Smith. And I have buyer agent, which is going to be me. And I click add selected. Once I do that, it gives me lots of options here for recipients. Buyer agent, I am in the habit now of receiving the documents first, signing first, and then having the buyer or seller um, sign them because it gives me a chance to make sure the documents are correct. I like being able to do this in DocuSign. Some other features here. Uh, if you are representing the buyer and you have the buyer sign the one to four, all the documents, the contracts, you could put the listing agent as the last person to receive the documents. Um, that's a great feature to use as well. So you could, the permissions here are needs to sign, needs to view, receives a copy. So uh, it gives you a lot of flexibility with that. I could have one and one for buyer agent, buyer one, and whoever is the first to open it is the first. Um, I've been getting into the habit of putting the numbers uh, in the order that I want people to receive them. I could add additional room participants at this point. So I have had a situation where I had a seller that her son, who was not on the deed but needed to see everything, needed to be a part of the transaction. So he was a part of it from this point, but he wasn't in a pre-tagged role. The email, this is what you want to have the title that you're going to see, uh, that your client will see when they receive the email from you. In our market center, every single thing that we have clients sign, we ask them to please read, review, ask questions, and then sign. That is where I would put that message. I'm going to click on next in the top right. This will open up the documents one more time for me, and I can add in the verbiage that did not fit when I was in the document a minute ago under the surveillance. So you'll notice at the top left it has Christy, which is me, and Sally. So I can change the fields based upon the person that I have up here, the assigned role that I have up here in the top left. So information about broker services. I don't know why that is there, but we'll just move that down. So this is for DocuSign. DocuSign knows that I need the buyer to initial this and date sign. Since I'm using DocuSign for its full capability, I activated the pre-tagged roles. It already knows where the initial and date boxes need to go. So I encourage you to make sure you fill out the, view, the details page because then DocuSign will work for you and you don't have to be adding all this information in here. General information. So I will say that in general information, um, it normally puts the person's name there. So let me go ahead and add that in. That's an easy enough fix. I'm going to put name. And you can also uh, do command C to copy that box. And then when I go down, I will do command V. That's on a Mac to paste it. Paste it on that page.
And then I'm going to copy the surveillance verbiage that was right here that I copied over from the other page. There we go. So how would I do that? So I'm in the envelope. I'm going to go to me and I'm going to add a text box. And just make that text box as big as I can. Over here on the right side, I'm going to paste that information that was from the other uh, page. And I can shift the formatting. I can make it smaller text, which then I can see everything that's in there that in our office, Linda Ramsey um, is uh, having us have in here. So I actually need to make this a little smaller because it covered up a few things. And there I go. So uh, you have some great functionality within DocuSign to be able to add things when you're in the envelope, um, which is different than in dot loop. So here down at the bottom, I'm adjusting where these dates signed fields are. Uh, I'm going to keep scrolling down. So is there anything I need to add here for Sally in these documents? Again, I did not fully fill out the buyer representation agreement because of time. Um, so I would need to go through. If there's anything that I forgot to put in here, since I'm in the envelope, I have the opportunity to do that. So let's just say, wow, I forgot to click intermediary status. I could click on that. When you go to check box values, I'm going to click checked right there. It'll check it for me. So I can go through and I can do that within here. I'm going to assume the rest of this is filled out correctly. I'm going to go to the bottom, make sure that it has every place that needs to be signed. I will say that the formatting for date signed includes the dates uh, timestamp, which actually makes it really long. So I've gotten in the habit of moving over the boxes um, so that the this date stamp does not go over on top of the other uh, information. So let's go ahead. I'm going to put this in here since I see that it needs to happen. I'm going to go to that checkbox value. There it is. It's checked. OK, that was the last document. I'm going to click on send. I could click on recipient re preview, but I feel comfortable with where it's at. I'm going to click send. And I am the first signer, if you'll remember. I put myself as the number one signer, so it is telling me that I need to sign, which is fabulous. I'm going to click Continue. And also on my phone right now, it is letting me know that I need to sign because of the DocuSign app on here. And so it's also letting me know that um, I need to do that. So I encourage you to get the DocuSign app on your phone. So I'm going to click on Start, and DocuSign will have me sign. So since I put this text box in here, I could make changes to it if I need to, but I don't need to change anything on here. I'm, I'm good on the fill-in. I don't need to do that. So now I'm going to go ahead and sign. Done. Finish. Great. Can you see what I was talking about with the date stamp? So if this is too long, if I have that date box here, it's actually going to go over into this area. And I'm going to click on Finish. I encourage you to go in and see what it looks like for the client to uh, be using the same system. So I'm going to go into Gmail real quick so you can see what that's going to look like for the client. So here within Gmail, Sally Smith. This is my Sally Smith account. She received this from me. It says, please DocuSign by a representation agreement. So make sure to use an email title that makes sense. I'm going to click on pre Review Documents. This is exactly what your client will be seeing. Same as what you saw if you're also signing the documents. Takes just a minute. And if I go back in here, you see that it says, please read, review, ask questions, and then sign. Okay, going back into the DocuSign page, click continue, click start. So she's going to sign, she's going to adopt how she wants to sign. Um, normally I would let it go to where I could see where I'm signing, but for the purpose of what we're doing right now, I just want to finish. So that is what your client would see. I encourage you to go through that process. 
The client could save something right here. Um, they could go ahead and download it if they wanted to. I'm going to click no thanks. Okay, so I'm going to go back into where we were. So I'm going to close this. And when I go back into the room, okay, so this is taking me into another area. If this ever happens to you when you're in DocuSign, come over here and you're going to click on switch to rooms. And this will take me back into the room area. So this is the dashboard that shows all recent rooms. I could also click on rooms. I don't know why it just did that. Let me go back in here. I've already, <laughs> I've been in many times. I don't know why it's asking me to authorize. Okay, so go into Sally Smith Buyer. I could do it from here or from clicking on rooms. Now when I click on documents, and I'm gonna go back, I like, you know, I like the list view. And I'm gonna click on newest. It shows that these have been signed. So this is the certificate, the DocuSign certificate. I archived these, but now these documents have been signed and it shows me that they've been signed, which is really handy. So at this point, this ends what I'm gonna show you here today for DocuSign and I will be uploading more videos. Let me know what you want more of. I hope this was helpful. Talk to you later.